Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. I'm your host, Frank Agan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Today, I have another great guest, as our ongoing subscribers know, often on this podcast. I will, I will be sharing ideas and insights, best practices for building those professional relationships and excelling at business networking. Occasionally, however, I will be having on subject matter experts, authors, speakers, thought leaders, social scientists. Um, these people share their knowledge to help us build relationships and understand why humans interact the way they do. Um, today, I have on Dr. Eric Reese. He is the co-founder of Health and Wellness at Nobody Studio, which is a venture studio based out of Orange County, California. And it's focused on the radical ideation and innovation and creation of people first startup companies. Um, he spends he has spent the last part of his decade or uh, uh, the last decade of his career treating and consulting with uh, individuals on how to maximize their bodies and brains, um, which in turn helps their businesses. Uh, and so from the clinic to the boardroom, He's leveraged his uh, understanding of neurosciences and behavioral psychology to help entrepreneurs maximize their business's impact and to grow success. Um, and he believes the, the brain's limitless, and uh, which is why his efforts at Nobody Studios are focused on maximizing human potential and pr improving access to global health care. So I have more than a social scientist on here. I have an actual doctor. Eric, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks, Frank. I'm excited to be here. Uh, can you touch a little bit on the sorts of uh, the type of work you do and helping uh, entrepreneurs and how it leads into Nobody's Studios? I, uh, I had Mark on uh, here, so there's a little bit of background on Nobody's Studios, but that episode came out a few weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. So um... I'll start off with just a little description of the studio. So we are a venture studio. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with that term, it's a relatively newer term in the startup space. Uh, a venture studio is essentially the combination of venture capital and incubation. So um, the, the money that we fundraise through angel investing, uh, crowdfunding, things along those lines, we use that money to fund internal startups that we create. Uh, we are also too um, heavily invested in finding founders who have brilliant ideas who may be lacking experience or they don't have a tech team behind them or they've never done branding or marketing. And so what we do as a studio is we bring in founders with ideas, we bring in industry experts, and we essentially help them create the companies that they've always wanted to create. And so um, what's really fun about our, our studio model is that we have so many different facets that we bring to the table. Um, it's fun to be a part of a project early on. It's fun to scale it and grow it and kind of see it go from this, this seed to becoming, a, you know, hopefully a, a massive, massive movement. And so um, with the studio specifically, my role is to um, really reach and, and develop our portfolio in the health and wellness space. So um, as the director of health and wellness, my goal is to essentially you know, try and find problems in, in health. Um, and as, as COVID has provided us, fortunately and unfortunately, there are a lot of things that we still realize that we need to improve. So um, with my role with the studio, I'm heavily invested in health and wellness, but as a studio as a whole, you know, we have different portfolios that we're dealing with. So we're dealing with social media, uh, development of technology, real estate, um, we have a bunch of different pockets that that we're um, investing our efforts in. And so we have specialists anywhere from, you know, crypto and blockchain to um, different aspects of online platforms, web development. So uh, we're kind of a diverse set of individuals who are coming together for the common good, which is to really create companies and create them faster and more efficient than anyone else has ever created them before. So it's a it's an audacious goal that we're, we're cunning um, and, and grabbing for. And I think... Uh, it's going to be a fun ride. So it's, it's an exciting time to be a part of it. Yeah, it, it, uh, to me, it's very interesting. Um, all, all the things that are, that are coming from that. And I, yeah, I guess it's just 
Nobody Studios in general. I told uh, um, Mark when he was on the call with me that uh, I, you know, I just, I think we're at a great time where problems can be solved out of tiny little, tiny little corners of the world. Whereas in the past, if you had a great idea, you had to make your way to Paris or London or New York, San Francisco, and that's not necessarily the case anymore. Um, people can people can kind of work on these things from wherever. So I just I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Certainly, what it can do to uh, the well being of of people across the world. Um, I'm fond of saying on this podcast that the number one relationships relationship we have is with ourselves. And if we're not feeling it, it's, it doesn't bode well for us with respect to our outside relationships. And uh, so I, I'm really glad to have you on to, you know, get into behavioral psychology and, and neuroscience. Um, you know, what social media is doing to us. People always ask me that question. How do I, how do you think social media is impacting relationships? And um, it certainly has an impact, um, but I don't think it's the impact that the, I don't think it's the answer that people want to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mike, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, it, it's, it's interesting bringing that up because, you know, to your point originally with you and I, just you and I even meeting, right? I mean, we met through LinkedIn and through a mutual friend of ours. I mean, you know, if we didn't have the internet or even social media to a point, you know, you and I would have never been able to met, you and I would have never been able to have an amazing conversation. And then you and I would have you know, never been able to really have these conversations and who knows where it's going to go. And so we are living in a really unique time. And this is one of the bets that, that we've hedged kind of with the studio as a whole is like the internet was kind of slow to set in and finalize itself to becoming this massive movement, right? It took, you know, for the lack of a better term, like a decade or two for us to really fully adapt the internet. And so as a studio, we're hedging our bets saying, you know, we were really fortunate the internet was kind of slow because moving forward, we think that there are going to be two, five, 10, 15 monumental breakthroughs over the next couple of decades. And if industries can't adapt, if Titans, you know, can't move and pivot quickly, which that's one of their biggest issues for, for large companies, then yeah. they're going to fall behind because they can't innovate as fast. And so, you know, to your, to your point with the social media, it has a lot of benefits, but it also has, you know, a lot of negatives too, right? Just even yeah. uh, the social comparison that we all have, right? Comparing your chapter two to someone else's chapter 20 can be psychologically uh, damning. And it can really, you know, make you second guess yourself of like, am I doing the right thing? Is this what I should be doing? Am I behind? Am I, you know, truly fulfilling these, um, you know, aspirations that I truly want to have for my life? And, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, you only get one set of tires, right? I mean, we don't know yeah. how, how long our timestamp is for life. And so, you know, it depends on how people use it. I think that, you, you know, you have to be structured and intentional with how you choose to use social media. Um, a couple of years ago, I really went through my, my Instagram and even my LinkedIn. And I was like, who do I want to follow? Like, who do I really want to let inside my cortex? Who do I want to be giving me information and feedback about the real world? And so, you know, I follow things about stoicism. I follow things about entrepreneurship and I follow, you know, some, some funny pages that, that make me laugh and bring some humor to my life. But outside of that, I really purged a lot because I was realizing it was taking a significant toll on my mental health. And I really empower a lot of people to do the same if they haven't, because you just don't know what you don't know until you get rid of it. And, um, you know, unfortunately for a lot of people, they're kind of at mercy to their environment and, and, and social media is a big part of that. Yeah. You know, I, it reminds me years ago when my wife and I were first starting to date in the early 90s, she made a comment to me about some of her coworkers. We worked at a big firm and they all started together and they had these they had these great cars, you know, and she's kind of driving around in a, in a used car that she got right out of that she bought right after she graduated. And, you know, you know what kind of what's wrong with me? And I just told her, I said, well, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. They might be up to their gills in debt. Um, you know, it's the comparison thing, right? You kind of touched on that. Well, that's with social media, it's, it's on steroids because nobody, you know, people post about bad things. Yeah, I lost my father, right? And they, and they garner sympathy 
or they'll post about really good things. I had an awesome day. Nobody's posting about the crap in the middle, right? Um, and it's it's this it's just this thin varnish of wonderful things, and that's all people see, and it can start to really wear on people. Yeah. Um, that's the downside. Yeah. Well, I mean, in it's funny because um, Tom Bilyeu, uh of the Impact Theory. So Tom Bilyeu, uh, for those who don't know, Tom has this really amazing story talking about how he early in his life just kind of thought he really wouldn't amount to much. He was really overweight. He, he was lazy. He just had all of these things going on. And um, he, he flipped the script. He turned around, you know, got healthy, took care of himself. And then he developed uh, this amazing supplement company. And so uh, he eventually sold that supplement company for like billions of dollars. And he it really empowers and talks about how important like your mindset is, how important your beliefs are. Um, and essentially just giving us more insight into how we can really change the scripts with what our story can be versus what our story actually could be, right? We all kind of hang on to different messages or we hang on to different identities and why you develop those is something that can be really important for you to digest and dig into. But some of the identities that we carry aren't always true. And, and unfortunately in cognitive neuroscience, we know that a lot of the memories, the beliefs and the things that we perceive aren't always objectively true in our reality. And so without going down the rabbit hole of getting into, you know, full-blown string theory and talking about cognitive neuroscience, which is, you know, a boring topic for 99% of the population. Um, there are some, there are some really interesting concepts that come through that and how this relates to business and how I really look at this too, is that um, I really have to be happy with myself before I can be happy with somebody else. And I, I really took that and, and owned that um, when I got on my last relationship before I met my wife, I was like, I, I want to be a better version of myself. There were things that I did an internal audit on. I was like, oh, I could probably improve on that. I could get better at that. Maybe I could, you know, think this way versus that way. And so spending time trying to improve yourself is going to be the best way to improve your environment because I feel, and this is, this is me not necessarily projecting, but this is kind of just my perspective on this is that I really feel like you um, you will attract what kind of what you put out. Right. And so sure. if you put out good energy, you'll probably attract some good energy. If you put out, um, you know, confidence, you'll probably get some opportunities to be able to network and connect with individuals. And, you know, unfortunately business really is personal in my opinion. Right. I mean, you're yeah. dealing with individuals and connections. And so you'll never get away from that because we're social beings and we were designed that way. And so understanding how to build good referrals and connecting with individuals and being inquisitive, and asking good questions can can really really allow you to accomplish your goals and build the business that you want to. And um, you're a great example of that. So um, you know it's it's interesting when we start digging into what we carry and what we believe because as we start adapting and improving, we start realizing that the stories we always told ourselves maybe or maybe weren't always true, but that doesn't mean that they should stop us from continuously improving and getting better every day. Yeah. Um... To what extent do you see social media, I guess, um, har harming us in business? I mean, before before social media, there was always there is Inc. Magazine, but that was the you know that was really kind of where you went for information, and you saw, you know, you saw two or three companies profiled every month that were that were killing it, and now on social media, it's like you see everybody's claiming to have a seven figure business. I shouldn't say everybody, yeah. lots of people. Yeah. Right. Um, and, um, and that can be, that can be demoralizing if, if you don't get a grip on, on, because I think our initial reaction kind of that, that um, our fast brain, is just like, Oh man, what's wrong with me? And I'm speaking for myself because I'll see those things and I'll say, man, how do I miss, how did I miss that mark? I've been doing this 20 years. How did they figure mm -hmm. out in 20 weeks? Um, and then I realized they didn't, mm -hmm. they didn't yeah. you can say whatever you want on social media. Nobody mm -hmm. audits it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's for better. And that's totally for worse too. Right. And um, you know, there, so a couple of things on that one is, like I said, I think that there are opportunities that are phenomenal for social media, right? You know, marketing your business, branding and all this stuff. But yeah, a lot of people put on a front, right? And 
uh, that's difficult, especially as a bystander, because you're like, what are they doing different than, than what I'm doing? Why have they found success before me? Well, sometimes some people get lucky bounces, but sure. I think we really forget that, um, you know, nobody is auditing, uh, you know, social media posts. Nobody can tell you if I'm a millionaire, a billionaire, a trillionaire, or if I have, you know, $500,000 worth of debt to my name. Because it yeah. doesn't matter, right? I could post whatever I want to on social media. So this whole psychological complex that we carry and is hardwired into our brains uh, is, is, is immediately we compare ourselves, this comparison game, which is going to be a losing game no matter what. Um, this is one of the things that made Michael Jordan so great is that he never compared himself to anybody else but himself. Yeah. That's why nobody could touch him. As everyone was chasing after Michael Jordan. Well, Michael Jordan was just trying to beat himself every single day. And sometimes to a detriment, right? With with his gambling and some of his addictions and things like that. But I mean, that's what made him amazing and, and nobody could touch him. And that's what makes a lot of pro athletes and business uh, entrepreneurs and just individuals in their daily lives. They, they, they're continuously going to battle against themselves. And there's something philosophically to be said about that too. Um, but as far as like enjoyment and fulfillment and, and feeling confident, that's a fun game to play too. You're a better version of yourself. You're not comparing yourself to anyone else because there's always going to be somebody who's better at you in business. They're better looking. They have more money. Maybe they're taller, whatever you want to use as your metric. And so um, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of comical to me because when we talk about people posting and boasting, right? They're on yeah. social media. They're telling you how great they are. Well, business is kind of boring. Like I'm sitting on my laptop, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, you know, typing up emails, creating things, you know, sending messages, trying to connect and communicate and, and build things. And so it's not glamorous. And so when you see people with their fancy cars and these huge houses and all these, you know, lecture halls that are full, I mean, that's really like one or 2% of everything else that they've had to do to get there. And, yeah. you know, Mark Cuban talked about, you know, 10 years in the making to become an overnight success. I think that that really remains true social media just gives you the false perspective that someone else did it faster. And a lot of times they really didn't. Yeah, no, it's, and I think once you're all around long enough and you follow these stories, um, you start to realize, and, and I will say this for some people, it is true, right? Like you say, they will call it a lucky bounce um, or man, they were working incredibly hard for a long time and we didn't see it. Um, mm -hmm. and coupled with a lucky bounce or, or they might be, you know, they might be at a point in time where, um, well, it's, it's uh, stories like the gap or the limited stories like that. Uh, um, they were incredibly successful businesses because they were at the right place in the right time, early sixties, the suburbanization of America. You know, they were just, they, it was, it was ripe, you know, start a retail giant today and you'd be crushed because it's not the, it's, it's not the time for it. You couldn't have started a tech company 40 years ago, a high tech company, because there just really wasn't high tech. Um, yeah. For, you know, 50 years from now, the notion of something like uh, YouTube or Amazon is going to be, you know met with a big yawn because, oh yeah, that's nothing, you know, that's been, been done forever. So a lot of it's timing. Um, well, but there and are isn't that comical too, uh, to think that Amazon and Apple and these Titans that we have today will be, I don't want to say dinosaurs, but they, they will be, they'll be part of the past. Right. Yeah. And, and kind of coming full circle. I mean, that that's one of the tenants and one of the things that we are really intrigued by as a studio for nobody studios, because you know, we don't really know what the future looks like. So we want to play a part in that. We want to shape the future. We want to have a seat at the table. And yep. probably for most people listening to this podcast, I mean, they all want to have a say in their future as well, too. That's why they're bettering themselves by listening to podcasts, learning more, right? Educating themselves, taking calculated risks. And so, um, you know, the future uh, is still yet to be determined or created. And so why not try and have a you know, opportunity to truly have an impact. And, and that's what I really like about entrepreneurship and, and business ownership is you are taking a risk, but that risk could have so many rewards if you just put in the time over tension, right? So even though you may not be that overnight success, five years in the making, maybe it's seven, maybe it's 10. I mean, maybe it's 12. I mean, 
Richard Branson, um, it took him a while to, to get to his elite status. Yeah. Look at James Dyson. James Dyson struggled for years before he finally, finally patented his Dyson vacuums and finally got, his, got the ability to truly create an innovative vacuum that changed the world. And so um, there are some amazing stories by entrepreneurs that really can instill hope uh, into people who feel like they're stuck or they're lost or they're uh, still trying to figure out what they want to be when they get older. Cause I know I am, I'm, I don't, I don't honestly don't even know what I want to be when I get older yet. And I think I'll spend the rest of my life trying to figure that out. And that's, that's a pretty well, uh, well worth a uh, route that I think I'm going to be happy taking. Yeah. I look at Colonel Sanders. He was 65 when he, uh, you know, finally, when he came up with the notion of Kentucky fried chicken, you know, 65. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, that was back in the day when 65 was old, you know, people didn't sure. live that long. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, I think that's, uh, we, you know, there's a great lesson in there to just kind of just keep, you know, just keep churning away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, slow yeah. and steady wins the race. Well, it's not the slow, it's more the steady that wins the race. Mm -hmm. Just kind of keeping after it. Um, yeah, that resilience is a huge part because, you know, for a lot of us, we weren't taught that in school. Right. I mean, if yep. you get failing grades, teachers are kind of like, well, you need to study harder. It's like, well, you know, we weren't always taught how to navigate the real world by going through school. And that's not a knock on saying school is wrong. But, you know, I never learned how to pay my taxes when I was in school. I never sure. learned how to balance a checkbook. I never learned how to take my ideas and turn them into reality and try and monetize a skill set. I mean, to a point, sure, you can say that, you know, there's an educational component in there, but I really had to learn that the hard way and by watching my, my father and, and, and mentors in my life who, you know, taught me and, and kind of helped me cultivate that thought process. And so it's not easy. And I think that that's what I, what I love about, you know, podcasts like this is that you are trying to accelerate the curve of, of people's learning. And I think that that is a novel approach. It can also make a really big difference. So I will always get behind joint ventures like that because I think we need more people in this world going out and, and, and challenging the status quo. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's, uh, as we wrap up here, let's kind of shift gears. What sorts of people are you looking to meet? Uh, how can the audience help you? How could they get a hold of you? Yeah, those are good questions. So um, you can easily find me on LinkedIn. Um, and, uh, you know, as a studio, you know, we're really heavily look, looking right now for people who have good ideas, who just, they just don't know what to do with them. So, you know, industry experts, leaders, people who've been in an industry for a while, and they're like, I feel like this can be done more efficiently, or I feel like this can be done better. Those are, those are the individuals that probably have the golden nugget. They just don't really know where to take that golden nugget and purify it and, and, and exploit exactly, essentially what their idea is. More importantly too, they don't have a platform to always test that. And that's one thing that we're really keen on is, is learning and then also unlearning. And so what does that mean? Well, of course we want to learn. We want to understand, we want to grow, we want to adapt, but some of the beliefs that we have today, we also have to unlearn. And this is especially true in neuroscience. Things that we know today can actually be, be proven wrong tomorrow with quality research. And so we have to be flexible with our thoughts. And so as a studio, we're really keen on trying to find individuals who are willing to challenge a status quo. Um, they have really good ideas. They want to bring them to the table and, and be part of you know, a founding team. And they're, and they're looking for support, right? So let's say you have an idea, but you don't know how to cultivate or you don't know how to bring it to market or you don't really know how to build a brand. Well, that's why the studio is there is to help you and guide you along a process. And with the models that we've created, uh, the nice thing is that we've kind of done a lot of the dirty work for you already to set you up for success. And so, you know, we have skin in the game and you have skin in the game. So it's a win-win conversation on, along those lines. We're looking for people who are passionate about what they do and what they want to do. I'd say that's probably one of the easiest things I could describe uh, a future founder or somebody who would belong in the studio is someone who can just think critically and think differently and someone who's willing to challenge that status quo. All right. Sounds great. Um, that sounds great. I'll get your LinkedIn uh, URL into the show notes so people can uh, can find you easily. I yeah, really appreciate uh, really appreciate your time today. This has yeah, been thanks, Frank. I I appreciate you having me on. It's always a pleasure, and um, I feel like you can I, you and I could always spend far more time than necessary talking. So it's always easy having a conversation with you. So I'm grateful we're able to finally record one. Thanks for joining us on the Networking RX podcast. 
Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.